further I am asking are batteries capable of being fast charged and answers are yes and no. Not all batteries can be charged fast for two reasons. First reason is heat dissipated and of course, the battery you must take out the heat. So, that is one part of it, but suppose you had a cooling mechanism and you could take out the heat. So, more heat needs to be taken out, but it can be taken out that in itself is not an issue, but the cells itself are designed such that when you try to draw out more current or push in more current, push in more current charging, drawing out is less problematic, but when you try to push in more current chemical properties get altered and the life of the cells will go down, life of the pack will go down. So, in fact, for example, a typical battery that we use in two amp two wheeler, if you look at the data sheet says 1 C charge is ok, but even that will reduce the life of the battery 0.5 C is ok, 0.5 C it gives you 1500 cycles, 1 C charge will already give you 11 1200 cycles, 2 C charge you cannot do, it will hit the battery very badly maybe for 15 30 to 30 seconds, even discharge has the same impact. So, essentially those cells are not designed, they are designed for 0.5 C, 1 C you can do once in a while, but it impacts the life of the battery beyond that you cannot do. The other cells more expensive where you can charge at 1 C, that will also impact. If you charge at 0.2 C, 0.5 C, you will get say 3000 cycles. If you consistently charge at 1 C, that 3000 will anyway come down to maybe 2000. You start at 2 C, maybe it will come down to 1000. So, life will go down, but still uh, if you charge fast, but of course, it can still give you 1000 cycles. There are other cells which are not designed to be fast charge. For example, if you remember all the different kind of chemistry that we have talked about, LTO battery which is much more expensive and much lower, much uh, lower energy density, hmm, much lower energy density you need a big volume and weight to give you a kilowatt hour is capable of being charged 4 C without any serious loss, hmm? but other batteries NMC batteries are not. Hmm? So, charging should be kind of restricted, sometimes some charging can be done. So, while most batteries low cost batteries I will say 0.5 C, maybe occasionally 1 C medium cost battery you can charge 0.5 C is best, 1 C will deteriorate, 2 C is ok once in a while. High cost batteries are there, we can charge 3 C or 4 C. So, the most important thing is not the charger, it is the kind of battery that you have, kind of cells that you are using, kind of battery that you are using. Of course, first thing you should have taken care of heat dissipation, that itself is very often not done. But for car battery it is done, normally heat dissipation is done, you create a liquid cooling and it will cool the battery, but even then it impacts the battery life because chemistry cannot take fast charge. Discharge rate can generally be higher, 1 C is quite normal, huh? you can occasionally go to 2 C or sometime even 3 C. Now, that is a very useful to me because well, I take longer time to charge, but while driving if I need more torque, if I need higher power during driving, I need to accelerate, I need to go climb up, hmm? uh, I need to do, then I may need more power. Hmm? So, fact that I can do 1 C commonly, it is fine 2 C and 3 C once in a while, because I am not accelerating all the time course, if you are driving on a hill, 
you are accelerating, you are trying to climb up post, not accelerating but climbing up post of time. You have to worry about it. That time, if you have not designed the battery carefully, you will land up using 2 C for long periods of time, maybe even 3 C. That is not good. Then you have to choose batteries. Either you make the battery bigger. What happens when you make a battery bigger? Well, battery has become, let us say, uh, suppose if the vehicle was taking 20 kilowatt and the battery is now no longer 20 kilowatt hour, but 40 kilowatt hour. So, now even at 40 kilowatt you can do at 1 C and that may be sufficient. So, either you have to make the battery bigger, hmm, that is one way or you have to use cells which can give higher rate of charging. And as I kept on pointing out, it is not just the C rate, but temperature management also becomes an issue, because you have just calculated what the heat dissipation is. The other important thing is this curve. Let us look at this curve. If you look at this one, this one is 0.2 C charging. It is starting to charge, 0.2 C means about 4 and a half 5 hours, it will charge up to 97 percent fairly ra reasonably rapidly and then it goes into what is called constant voltage mode. This is the constant current, this is the constant voltage mode. This may take longer time, but then you may not want to charge beyond 97 percent, because remember depth of discharge you may not even want to charge. So, this can charge though it takes longer time, it can charge to 97 percent. Let us say from 0.2 C to 0.5 C, see what happens. It can charge only up to 90 percent. Top 10 percent cannot be used easily unless you wait for long time to charge. That is a very slow charge because you are putting constant voltage and allowing the charge to slowly come in. So, if you are charging 0.2 C, sorry 0.5 C and 0.5 C is very low rate of charging. You just assume that depth of discharge that you are going to use is not more than more than 90 percent or, or on the top you will not use top 10 percent. You may also leave something in the bottom. Hmm? Uh, you look at the bottom also, bottom of course, it starts charging very rapidly, the voltage increases and then go. Now, this is at 0.5 C which is a normal what happens if we charge at 1 C. Now, this is for a specific battery. From battery to battery, these numbers will vary, but the trend will always be like this. If you see 1 C stops at 80 percent. So, top 20 percent capacity is not used or you have to wait for a long time to charge after that. Worst is in this specific battery, take 2.5 C it reaches 57 percent and that is it. After that, if you want to go here, 2.5 C basically means you can charge in 25 minutes or even less, but in fact, you can charge in about 15 minutes uh, up to 57 percent. After that, this part if you want to charge, may take couple of hours. So, you are really not getting the fast charge. Fast charge benefit you are only getting up to 57 percent. Almost 40 percent on the top is just capacity is not even being used. Hmm? Now, this is for a particular uh, cell. There are other cells where maybe at 2.5 C you can charge up to 75 percent. So, you have to worry, you, this charging curve becomes very, very important. You cannot just take a charger. This is battery characteristics. This is nothing to do with charger. What is a charger? Whatever power you want to give, it will give you that power. Charger is not, uh, but it will reach a certain stage. It is a constant current charging and then it will stop. It will do constant voltage. Okay. So, C will take much longer time. Charging 
characteristics chemistry dependent. For example, if you take a LTO battery, you will see 4 C charging also will bring you to 90 percent, but the battery becomes very expensive and very big in size and higher in weight. Now, of course, you can do partial charge. If you just want to charge for example, 20 percent or 20, you have a 600 kilometer range and you want to charge only 150 kilometer, then there is no problem. At 1 C you can charge at 15 minutes or less. Huh? In 15 minutes at 1 C charge, you can get to uh, if it is a uh, 600 kilometer range, in 15 minutes you may be able to not get 200 kilometer, but we will get 150 kilometer or more, because uh, you do not charge from 0 uh, to certain amount. So, you will get that. So, at 1.5 C also you can charge and in about 10 minutes at 1.5 C, uh, 1.5 C and 600 kilometer is a theoretical range from 0 to 100. You may actually use only uh, 500 because you have a depth of discharge, then you can charge probably uh, 200 kilometers in about 10 minutes at 1.5 C. So, this partial charge for high large size battery is common. So, sometimes you will see an advertisement saying in 12 minutes I can charge battery. Sure, you can charge. Question is how much you are going to charge. Very often they do not tell you that or they say in 12 minutes you can charge 200 kilometer and you think it is a lot, but it is 200 kilometer is only about one third of the battery or even less. Hmm? That is very often not stated. If your battery size is small, if your battery like my car 100 kilometer range, what can you do in 10 minutes or 15 minutes? then you will charge 20, 25 kilometers or even less. That is not good, but that is not what I am looking for. So, this is a fast charging. Remember when we are talking about battery, we also had given you a discharge curve and, but I am not going to talk about discharging that we have done in battery chapter. Here simply we are saying in charging, first your battery should be capable of being fast charged and then also you will not be able to do 100 percent charging, but partial charge in 15, 20 minutes for a large size battery in a larger vehicle is quite ok. And this is often what is advertised and confuses the whole picture. If you want less cost vehicle, smaller battery, first charge is very difficult. Another question that keeps on coming up, is the grid ready for EV fast charge? What is the problem? These chargers, suppose it is taking 100 kilowatt or 50 kilowatt or even 20 kilowatt and there are 10 of these charger taking 10 kilowatt, 20 kilowatt, 200 kilowatt you are drawing and vehicles are being charged, 200 kilowatt you are drawing charging stops, vehicles move out, you are stopping the charge, stopping the taking from the grid. From the grid, the amount of current coming in and out is rapidly can change. It is like almost two homes suddenly stop taking any power and suddenly come up. Now, if there are one or few chargers, it is all right, but if there are lots of chargers in a city, you will certainly see lot of variation of load. Question is first of all grid, is grid capable of giving all this load for all the charges? Can it take rapid fluctuations? This is a concern for widespread proliferation. If it is not a widespread proliferation, if it is a few chargers, no problem, early stage there is no problem, but once it is a widespread proliferation, then you have to worry about it. If it is a slow charger 300 watts to 3 kilowatt is less than an air conditioner, air conditioner switching on and off, which you do it anyway all the time, nobody is concerned. Current is well designed for that, but 
turning on turning off 30 kilowatt charger, 50 kilowatt charger is where issues come. So, two problems are associated with higher rate charging. The distribution line may not be able to give you 70, 50 kilowatt or 100 kilowatt. Hmm. So, suddenly large amount of current and then you stop charging the current the current goes down distribution networks may have a problem. Now, if this bulk charger have lots of batteries uh, and therefore, can draw a large amount of current. Of course, if it is a small batteries and you are charging slowly does not matter, uh, but if you are fast charging it can draw a lot of current. So, the problem number one is the distribution line may not be capable. Second is peak power requirement may be difficult to meet as more and more fast chargers are used. Even if the distribution lines are capable, but the generation station now suddenly has to increase the energy power and then decrease the power. Hmm. So, manage peak power requirement using pricing for example, time of day or time of use price metering. So, if you are trying to draw a lot of a power when lot of power overall is being drawn you are charged higher. So, that basically sort of say well if it is a peak load time do not put too many such vehicles for charging. Hmm. It may also happen that grid may tell the charger see do not draw too much power. Uh, even though you are capable of giving 50 kilowatt, but at this time I would not be able to afford that please draw less power. So, this is a very important thing grid and charger will talk and tell the charger please limit the amount of current at certain time, at certain other time say. So, first thing it can tell the charger grid can tell the charger char you are charging high at high power you try to your metering your tariff can become high. Normally, in India for example, you do it at 5 rupees per unit. Right now, I am in shortage and you are trying to draw high power, I will charge you 10 rupees per unit. So, that is one communication between the grid manager and the charger. The second communication is, well I have done all this and still I am too much power is being drawn, I am in a situation where I cannot generate enough power please do not charge more than 10 kilowatt and the charger will reduce. So, this is the important reason why the charger and the grid manager needs to talk to each other. Hmm? The other interesting thing and it is becoming more and more interesting is I have a vehicle my battery is fully charged. Let us say I have decent size bat bat vehicle 50 kilowatt hour battery. My battery is mostly charged. I have come and parked at my home connected to the charger and suddenly overall load on the grid is high. Can the vehicle supply power? Do you discharge instead of charging? After all it is a battery storage. Discharge it now, charge it later. For example, one of the very interesting things that is happening and we will also be doing it trying to build these things at IIT Madras. In Europe right now, what happens a lot of electric vehicles have come. Hmm. Generally when is the load? The load is somewhat reasonably high in the daytime, but of course, sun is there, solar gives you a lot of energy at that time. So, you can meet that and then evening load, evening loads are becoming very high. Why is the evening load very high? All of all people maybe you have gone to work, but now they will all come home in the evening 5 30, 6 o'clock, 6 30, 7. They will turn their microwave oven on, they may even turn their air conditioners 
Hmm? They may even do washing machine, dishwasher also. Your load becomes very high, your television, all electronics are on at home. And while the office power would have gone down, may not have gone down. If it is an industry, it may be running in two shifts. Office powers have reduced a bit, but still a lot of work is going on in the office, because people have flex hours. So, evening load becomes a very, very big problem. So, what is being proposed? A very interesting experiment is starting. Bring your vehicle to the office, connect it to the charger. Every parking lot will have a charging spot. I have a lot of solar. Whenever my demand is less, I will charge you. I will charge the vehicle. So, you come by the evening, the vehicle is fully charged. It is a 50 kilowatt hour battery, it is fully charged and mostly charged from solar. Now, you drive it to your home, maybe you have consumed some, you do not drive necessarily long distance to home. At home, you also connect to a charger. Now, evening is coming the grid is going to be overloaded. Why? Because lot of uh, loads are being turned on. Now, you get the vehicle to supply the power to the grid. So, shave off what is called peak evening peak load, shave off, reduce the evening peak load. If every home starts doing that evening, uh, power drawn will become less, because your power from the car is being for car battery is being used. And in the night time, once it becomes 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, people have slept, the amount of usage goes down, you recharge the battery a bit hmm? or let it drive back to office and get charged in the workplace with the solar. This is becoming very common now. We will also build this fairly soon and we will be able to show that this evening peak load can be shaved off. It is a very interesting thing, it has come only last one year and suddenly there is lot of interest. So, that is what is called use EV battery for grid storage, enable EV to the grid. So, this is an assignment that I have given more or less on line with what I had talked about. For a full battery pack, calculate the amount of heat dissipated in a prismatic cell, cylindrical cell and power cell. Another question very similar, where I am taking a larger battery, 350 volt. What will happen if you use 350 volt, vis a vis 48 volt? One of the question was 48 volt, another question was 350 volt. What is the difference? Voltage is higher, current will be small. Here, voltage is lower, current will be high. If the current is high, I square r will be very high. So, this will give you a lot of heat dissipation. This on the other hand, E may not give you as higher heat dissipation. Why? Because voltage has gone up, current is so, I square r matters. So, these are similarly, I have given another problem, where you take a vehicle and the depth of discharge is given and uh, both at the bottom and the top consumes 150 watt hour per kilometer. What should be the range that the vehicle can give if it is charged at 0.5 c and 2.5 c. Remember, use, use the data that I had shown in, in the curve. At 2.5 c, you cannot charge to 100 percent, you can charge only at 57 percent. Okay. So, there is another problem, there is a 20 kilowatt charger with output voltage that can be varied from 48 volt to 800 volts. And then I ask question, what is a peak charging current, will you call it a fast charger or a slow charger? 